I have been informed that um, the independence examiner has um, made a mistake in the announcement for my brother Leland's um, services next week. And um, August 17th at 2 o'clock here at the gathering place is where those services are going to be. Uh, for some reason, the independent examiner couldn't get that. Um, they put someplace on Truman Road, and I don't even know where, what that is. And then some people had thought it was at 1 o'clock. It is at 2 o'clock. So I want to make sure that we get that. I would like to introduce who's up front with me tonight. Um, I will tell you that as I look out, I see my friends and my family. Um, Frank is here, and I just made me smile when I came out and saw you here tonight, sir. It just, I didn't expect to see you. Um, I see other friends who have traveled from distances also, and it just it makes me happy to see you. Uh, since coming back from the caravan, I have had the joy of working every single day for the last two weeks plus, so um, I have missed church, and I have missed my friends, and it is nice to just be in your presence tonight. Sitting over on this side is Elijah Woods. He's a deacon. He attends Center Branch. Sitting next to him is Madison Moore, who is also a deacon, also attends Center Branch. You'll see a theme here. Um, next to him is Alex Parker. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, Alex Tibbetts. And Parker's sitting out there someplace. Uh, Alex Tibbetts, who is a teacher. Over on this side is... Isaiah Woods, who is a teacher, and then on the end is Joshua Matting, who is a deacon. Joshua attends Center Branch, Isaiah teach, attends Center Branch, and then Alex and I are the oddballs out. I attend here at first, and Alex has come all the way up from Oklahoma to join us tonight, and I appreciate that. Um, I hope you saw the shirts as you came in of all the youth and those who participated in the programs this summer. And you'll see that same thing on the back of the shirts, on the front of your bulletin. There, that. At the back of your bulletin, I would encourage you to also read that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as we get into the service. I'd like to welcome you here in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I recognize that when I speak his name, that it has power. And I come here to worship tonight in that name. And that's what I invite you to do also. The call to worship comes out of the Doctrine and Covenants, section 163, and it's printed in the bulletin with us tonight, starting in verse 5a. It is recognized that the remnant church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has an aging membership. It is incumbent upon these seasoned saints to teach, nurture, and assist in navigating the younger generations in their commitment in working in and for the cause of Zion. This generation is facing so many challenges as they attempt to live in the world and yet not be part of it. Counsel given in section 153.3 is even more applicable now than in 2009. I, the Lord, desire to empower the youth and young people of the church with the power of my spirit to be abiding witnesses of my son and his gospel. They must remain apart from Babylon, lest they fall prey to the enticings of men and the adversary. If they seek me, they shall find me. I will give them strength to overcome. It is to this end that the senior citizens of my church are called upon to assist in this cause. We'll follow the worship tonight. We're going to open with hymn number one, the Spirit of God, and we'll stand.
Oh Lord, I thank you for this beautiful day you have given us. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to gather here and giving us this opportunity to exclaim what you have done for us and to uplift you, us as a youth. Lord, I pray that we'll be able to speak the words that need to be spoken. And I pray that your will will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Now behold, a marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. Therefore, O ye that embark in the service of God, see that you serve him with all your heart, might, mind, and strength, that ye may stand blameless before God the last day. Therefore, if you have desires to serve God, ye are called to the work. For behold, the field is white, all ready to harvest. And lo, he that thrusteth in his sickle, with his might, the same layeth up in store, that he perish not, but bringeth salvation to his soul. And faith, hope, charity, and love, with an eye single to the glory of God, qualifies him for the work. Remember, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. Ask, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen.
Mosiah chapter 1, verses 49. And behold, I tell you the you I, I'm sorry. And behold, I tell you these things that ye may learn wisdom, that ye may learn that when ye are in the service of your fellow beings, that ye only in the service of your God. Our offertory reading from this might, funnily enough, comes from the book of Mosiah, the second chapter, verses 43 through 45. I would that ye should impart of your substance to the poor, every man according to that which he hath, naked, visiting the sick, and ministering to the relief, both spiritually and temporally, according to their wants. And see that all these things are done in wisdom and order, for it is not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength. And again, it is expedient that he should be diligent, that thereby he might win the prize. Therefore, all things must be done in order. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we thank you as the great creator and the great I am, the giver and creator of all we enjoy. Father, we just pray for these monies that will be collected, that you have blessed them in their use, that they will be used wisely, and for those purposes that you have in store for them. And Father, we would pray not for this only, but pray that you'd also bless them and sanctify and consecrate our lives, that we ourselves and our whole beings may also be in thy service. In Jesus' sacred name, amen. May we partake of the offering. Now put a smile on your face. <laughs> Made me think about a conversation I had this past week with my boss who 
we talked about how well, we talked about how our bodies are falling apart and that maybe youth is wasted on the young that if we could go back and have all the knowledge we have now we wouldn't mind being back there but just to think about I want you to stop and think about when you were 13 14 15 years old and what you didn't know you ever thought about that I have been blessed to be asked to direct youth programs for the church. And I'm gonna tell you that's a blessing. I get to spend time with some amazing people. I get to tell parents, and they look at me twice sometimes at the end of a camp or at the end of activity, about how much I enjoy their child and how neat their child is or how they should be proud of how that child behaves and they look at me like are you sure that's the same child that I know <laughs> yes it is I would like you to take a look just for a moment to the back of your bulletin hopefully you've seen this flyer before and I printed it here for the handmaidens and warriors ice cream social I got a email and that's why I got my phone out because it was an email from the wonderful ladies who uh, do the handmaidens program. They asked me to read this. Handmaidens meet on Monday evenings and it's for girls going into kindergarten through fifth grade. We've done a number of fun activities, classes, including a campfire, beginning fridge classes, tea party, dance classes, life skill lessons, and our end of the year celebration, the carnival. And then they mentioned the ice cream social. And I would encourage those parents who have kids that age to please make sure you're there at the ice cream social. And it is, as you notice, there for both handmaidens, the girls, and the warriors, the boys. And then underneath that is the conversation about the fellowship and serving him. We call it fish. The fellowship in serving him. Think about what we're called to do as a people. We're called to serve a fellow man. And that's really part of the conversation that happens in Fish. But remember the statement about being 13, 14, 15 and not knowing what you didn't know? Part of not knowing is the answers to a lot of questions. And some of that is not knowing who to ask those questions to. And I was very pleased with the FISH program this last year in dealing with some of that and taking some of those issues and talking to the kids and letting them ask their questions and ask, answering those questions from the point of view of Christ. I mean, in the end, that's what we're about. We're about following Jesus Christ and so when we talk and we answer questions, it is about the teachings of Jesus Christ and how do we get there. And that's a conversation that I appreciated. This next year, um, I was worried about who was going to be leading fish. And um, I had some ideas and some thoughts and talked with some people about it. And um, I had somebody who anxiously wanted that position wanted to take that on. And I'm pleased that Elijah Woods is going to do that with the help of Isaiah. The two of them are going to step up and do that. Within that process, we've got some ideas and I'm gonna let Elijah share some of that with you um, at this point. So I kind of wanted to back up a little bit uh, and not, not bleed into the testimony portion we're going to have, but I kind of wanted to back up and share a little bit about uh, my experience at camp and how that was, I think, preparing me for a lot, but explicitly, I think, to step up more and be in a more of a leadership position. I went down to camp this year. Um, as I have before, I've been staff uh, for about 
four years now, I think I've been helping out, maybe five, and I went down expecting what I always do, a great week and being able to help minister and be there as support for the director and um, to be fed more in that week than a lot of weeks combined when I'm, when I'm back here. And I was surprised to go through the week and find that it was different than before because growing up going to camps, I always had the experience of, I had these incredibly wise and intelligent and just a blessing to have men there that I was able to look up to and was so blessed to have. People like, people like Corwin and Dan Keeler and Jerry Shearer and Don Kite and Kevin Falk and all of these men who I respected so much because they just seem to have a spirit about them that lent itself so well to working with the youth. And really, I always felt like I could go to those people and they could give me guidance and we are such leaders. And I don't think I've ever felt that down there. I've never felt like I was that person that a kid could come to. And I wasn't that person that had that discernment to help one of the kids down there get through something and know what the Lord would have them to know. And that flipped on its head this year. I was sort of thrust into this position of having that responsibility. And it felt amazing. It felt like this is what I've been preparing for and what the Lord had been preparing me for for years. And I came back with a newly filled up vigor to really be involved in taking a more active role in leading and taking up that burden that he wants me to with his help and the help of of those around me. So going into this year, me and Isaiah are going to be the primary people that are at FISH leading week to week. But the goal is to really have a core group of um, the two of us plus four other couples that are going to sort of cycle out week to week on, a, on an ongoing basis and be our teammates and, and co-leaders week to week. And we'll sort of swap up who's going to be there with us and really to keep it fresh for all of the leaders so they don't get burnt out at being the, having to be there week to week. And so we can keep it fresh for how we're doing classes and activities and that kind of stuff for the kids. Um, me and Isaiah have talked about it. And we really want to take a more active role in uh, actually doing ministry with the community and that sort of thing. And I'm really, really looking forward to the year to come, and I hope that I'll see all of you again and that we can strive to match the year we've had, because I know it's been amazing. And I want to continue that, continue that upward, upward strive. So, thank you. I don't know if you guys are aware, but I have watched this past year particularly in Center Branch, these young priesthood members step out multiple times a week and do home visits to do ministry. And it has impressed me. And I just want to make sure that I share part of that with you because there are exciting things going on with our youth. I don't think Eli really mentioned and talked about FISH is for those going into sixth grade. We're in sixth grade this next year, all the way through seniors in high school. So it's junior high, senior high, or middle school and high school combined there. They meet on Friday nights. They're going to meet from 7 to 9 on Friday nights. So kind of get your kids ready to go. I know that some, some of the kids say, well, what about high school football games? I will tell you that as that program shares the spirit of God, kids choose to be there instead of being other places. And I've watched it happen and it has amazed me. As the spirit of God is in place, people want to be there. 
I'd like to talk about a little bit about what happened this summer as far as camps. Um, I'm going to ask all of those who are wearing your camp shirt to stand up. It's important that uh, I found in the years, you can sit down now, thank you guys, that at camp we give out a shirt. That's something that they take home, and it's not something they just hang on the wall and forget about it. It's something they get to wear, something that they end up having to ask, answer questions about when they wear it, I'll be honest with you, because people will ask, well, on the back of your shirt it says, what does it say there? Oh, what is that? What does it say on the front of your shirt? Are you a child of God? What's that mean? One of my visions for the youth program was to move it to a point where we were having the local district take over some of the responsibilities that we've all thought in the past belonged with the district level. And this year for the first time, we had a junior camp in a long time. And I didn't run it. I wasn't involved in making sure. I, they came to me, they talked to me about it, but South Central District did that. And I was like, yes. Some of the things that I would like to see happen, some of the things where I'd like us to see us go. I'd like us to see us grow those camps so that the kids in Oklahoma are the primary ones there. That they don't feel like they got 10% from Oklahoma and 90% from the center place. Because at that point, I think we could also, as those grow, start recognizing that maybe we ought to run some camps in the center place. And I think the response we'll have will amaze some of us of our junior camp, a junior high camp, and a senior high camp that we could have here where we didn't have to transport kids six hours away to do a camp. So I want you to understand some of the goals and some of where we're going. Coral or Albert, did you want to share about junior camp at all? You, I know you guys have testimonies later that you want to share, but I, I, if you want to share something. Yes. I got to start with junior high camp, uh, where Coral and I uh, began uh, the youth camps uh, with this summer. Uh, took my oldest son, my youngest son, as counselors this year, and my grandson as a camper at junior high camp. And it's first camp my oldest son has been to in a lot of years. He used to, he went to all the camps growing up, never missed a year from junior camp all the way through senior high, went as a CIT for several years, was a counselor for a couple of years, went to college, kind of got out of it, and anyhow, he really had a wonderful time. Now, my grandson got to go last year to his first junior high camp. I just want to let I tell you this because of how important it is that we have our kids at camp. Holden had a wonderful time last year. On the way home, I, I was a little concerned. I, he was quiet. He was normally a quiet young man until last year. But I asked him, I said, Holden, are you going to be ready to go next year? <laughs> Oh, yeah, Papa, I'm ready. Let's go. I said, well, you ought to work on your dad. Don't you think it would be great having him? Oh, yeah. Well, Dad was all about it this year, and he had a wonderful, wonderful time. He said, these kids are great. These kids are great. My exact testimony over the last four years that we've been involved with the camps, you kids are great. You're wonderful. I've made friends that will be a lifetime friendship. And it's not just a friendship, but it's a brother-sister and a brother-brother relationship. God is so wonderful in bringing a ministry to these campers in, and to get them together at a time like this. Look at the things in school today. Some of them, this is the only opportunity they have to really be in a serious environment. Well, I was very concerned that Having been a part of junior camp many years ago in the RLDS church, i had been a counselor several times in junior camp. We always had a week-long camp, but we hadn't had one in the, the uh, church since 2005 or 6 was the last time that I'm aware of 
and it was just like a weekend. Well, we decided that we really wanted to do this, Coral and I, and so talked to the prophet. He told us to talk to Brother Corwin and might just hold it to the to the, your district. And uh, anyhow, we couldn't do that because people were asking. We weren't going to turn anyone away. Not that I want to be disobedient to the prophet, trust me. <laughs> what a beautiful camp. Guess who came as a counselor to junior camp? My daughter-in-law, because my granddaughter was old enough to come to junior camp. My daughter-in-law, who's a non-member, came to camp. She made wonderful friends. As Coral and I said, we've kind of lost friends now because they favor our daughter-in-law. <clears throat> And you'll have to find out who Lucy and Ethel are, named by my daughter-in-law. And uh, that is from the Lucille uh, Ball Show. But such a wonderful, wonderful time. My granddaughter loved it. We need to grab these kids sooner. They have so much going against them in the world today. And we all know that, lest they be homeschooled by parents that are Christ-believing parents that raise them up in the way that the Lord would have them. This was a wonderful opportunity. I praise the Lord for the privilege and opportunity to have had such wonderful camps. And it's all because of each one of you, those that have sent their children or sent their grandchildren or, or said a good word about, the, oh, these camps are wonderful. Let's get our, our grandkids there. Let's talk to our son or daughter and, and try to get them there. What a wonderful privilege it is to be trusted with your children what a beautiful experience it is to be at the camp and to have them ask questions, to see tears in their eyes at campfire, to have the wonderful friendships that they make, lifelong friendships. I thank you people. And I also thank the ones that, the many that stepped up and wanted to be counselors or cooks or uh, assist as CITs or just to be there for, for working with the uh, crafts. What a wonderful thing it is to have such a wonderful group of people to work together. Isn't that what the kingdom is supposed to be about? Is the people working together. We don't have time to feud when we're working together. We can't be irritable with someone because they might say, well, I'm not coming back next year. No, no, no. You're right. I'm wrong. And I'm, trust me, I'll do that. I'll go that far before I would ever want to lose anyone from camp. You all give because you love the kids, and you give because the Lord blesses you for it. But anyway, thank you all for a uh, very successful season of camp. At our reunion this year, we had a baptism. Junior high camp, we had a baptism. Senior high camp, they had a baptism. And we could have had one at junior camp, but they weren't quite ready. But anyway, trust in the Lord. Get your kids, get your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews. Get them to camp. They'll enjoy it and it'll be a lifelong experience. Albert, how many campers did we end up at junior camp? I didn't ever get told. 15 campers. And at junior high camp, there were 25. And Samantha, how many were at senior high camp? 25. And those are numbers that I've seen grow each year as we've done these programs. I want to move on because I want a chance for some of these people to share their testimonies. And so we're going to move into a song here, a worship song um, that Sarah Bass is going to lead us in. Hopefully most of you know this song, but um, if you don't, come along with us until you get it. Sarah? I'm actually going to sing two songs since Corwin skipped over the first one. Yes, I it's okay. I won't take it personal. <laughs> but like he said, if you know it, join along. And I know the campers know this because you all sing it at campfire. So I expect to see all of you sing it. <laughs> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Children, 
Thank you, Sarah. Sorry for missing the first one. At senior high camp this year, I watched these three young men at the beginning of camp. They were asked to come up with cabin names. And they came up with the goofiest, silliest, and most immature gambit name you could find. And one of their cabin mates really didn't want that as his cabin name. And he tried to talk them out of it. And they were pretty adamant that's what they wanted. And I watched the Spirit of God work on these three young men in this cabin that had a goofy name. About midweek, do you know they took down the name and they covered it up? And they came up with a new name because they wanted to be known as God's men. They wanted to be known for belonging to Christ. I saw that happen in them. 
without me having to say, no, you can't have that name. No, that's really immature. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit worked on them and brought them where they recognized that they didn't want to be known as that. I watch on a regular basis at camps, at youth activities, the Spirit of God work in young people's lives. You want to know why I'm excited about being part of the youth program? Because I get to see that. There's nothing better in this world than to see the Holy Spirit work on somebody, to see that young life changed. And I watch as these youth come together after that experience and again and again, and how they look around and they see those friends who, be honest with you, in this world outside those doors, they don't have a lot in common. They don't go to the same schools. They don't see each other outside of youth activities a lot. They do text and whatever else you want to call it, Twitter or whatever, with each other a lot. I found that out. But when they get together again, they want to accept everybody. And I see them with new people who come in. And they say, here, join our group. Be part of us. I don't care what, what people think of you outside there. Here, you're part of the group. Because they've recognized that calling that the Holy Spirit gives that says, God loves each of us. And he calls to each of us. Now, he doesn't call us to continue to live the way we, we live. He calls us to change and become better. But it's neat that the Holy Spirit will do that work of teaching us that this is not acceptable or this needs to change. I would invite both the campers and the staff who would like to share a testimony about their experience to come up and do so. We're going to do it this mic, so I'd ask you to stand up and kind of get in line. Today, uh, this summer, we had um, junior high camp. And I will be honest with you, at camps, the hardest people to find are usually the cooks. Because to be honest with you, it's the hardest job. And I appreciated um, Darren and Melody doing the cooking at junior high camp. At senior high camp, um, I'm just going to say Tracy um, Bryant really took that over. She had help with a lot of other people helping, but she took that over, and I appreciated her cooking. Who cooked at junior camp? Darlene Collins and Betty Williams. And again, I'm going to tell you that's the hardest job, and I appreciate when people are willing to do that. So is there somebody else who would like to share a testimony? I was waiting for you. Come on up. There you go, Artemis. All right. Um, during senior high camp, I... The beginning of it, I didn't really feel anything spectacular about it, um, but I noticed that when I, when we were about to come home, we were getting ready a couple days before then, I, I didn't want it to end. I, I just wanted it to keep on going, and. When I came home, I, I felt that that spirit that was there, it wasn't. I had a very hard time with it. one thing that I did notice about camp. The people there, you could tell when, 
when their hearts were in the right place. Because what they did, you know, it brought forth, it brought forth something good. I think that that is represented represented really well in this scripture. It's in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. And it says, And again, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. For do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So every, every action that someone takes what they do, what they say, how they treat someone. You can tell where their heart is. You can, you can feel that. And I've noticed that there were many good hearts at camp. Something that the Aaronic priesthood were doing down at camp were praying for a hedge of protection, especially at campfires. Um, it seemed that sometimes we would do this in unison. Sometimes it seemed like it would be one at a time with our own discretion. Um, I remember it was the last campfire, Friday night. Ralph was leading that. And the ironic were standing. I was on the right. Eli was on the left. And Isaiah was more in the center and we get to the closing prayer and they gather around to and we're holding hands and we're praying and I was thinking that I should walk over there and join them but I decided not to and as I was Standing, standing there with my arms to my side, all of a sudden I felt pressure and warmth in my hands. And it took me a couple seconds to decide to look, look up and see who decided to, you know, circle up and hold hands. And as I'm looking, I notice no one is there, but I still feel this pressure and this warmth, like, I know someone's holding my hand and it was revealed to me in that moment that the Lord had sent his angels and they had circled around us in that campfire and was protecting us from the darkness from the outside and in that that moment I almost felt over, overwhelmed because I've never experienced anything like that and it was just a blessing and it, it's something I will always remember and always think about when I think about the youth and upholding them and helping them guide them to the right path down the Lord's path. This year, I personally did not get an opportunity to go to camp, 
as all the youth that's here would know. It was my first year missing for probably the last six years. And uh, as being a witness in the camps in the past, you see the youth grow. You see how they would be afraid to speak forward, afraid to do anything, afraid to stand up and witness for the Lord, even amongst their friends that are at church. Um, I'm proud of Sarah. <laughs> She was at camps uh, and senior camps, and I think one junior camp when I got to go, and she is a, a inspiration for me. Um, there were many things that went on in my life this year that did not allow me to go to camps. And when you don't go to camp after being there that many years, you miss that camaraderie. You miss that spirit of God. I'm sorry to say I don't like the idea of bringing just camps up here in the city because it's different on the land that's down there in Oklahoma. I don't mind driving. I wouldn't mind taking a bus down there from here. Right, brother? <laughs> brother Ralph did a, a long bus trip. It's important for the children, the young youth, the upcoming youth, I saw my children go through this camps. I was a witness to them growing up and becoming closer to the Lord. And they are also an inspiration for me because I stumble many times. When you are uh, out in this world, as you all know, there's rocks and arrows and things thrown at you. But when you have the opportunity to go stand in the midst of friends, loved ones, children, and the Lord, specifically at a campfire or maybe even sitting at lunch and somebody puts their elbows on the table. Hmm. We have fun. We have love toward each other and there's no judgment. And that's the way the Lord wants us to be. Not judge each other because you don't like anything that that do or we got to realize that we're brothers and sisters, and if we don't treat our brothers and sisters right, how can we treat strangers? How can we treat those that are out in this world to shine that light? I'm wearing a shirt here that I didn't even earn, honestly, because I'd love to have been there, but I will wear it whenever I have an opportunity. Camps are a true blessing to be able to be down there with those young people. There's nothing more important to guide a soul to Jesus Christ. And when you're down on those grounds, you're away from the world, away from the, the, the things that are going on in this world. There's nothing more important than coming closer to Jesus. And me being a cook down there this year, I, I like cooking. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy doing it with my wife makes us grow closer together in a relationship as a husband and wife. But, uh, and that helps out on feeding their physical body. But we also got, I also got an opportunity to speed, feed their spiritual body through chats. It was only 15 minutes in the evening. And every time that would come around, I'd get nervous a little bit because I knew that I'm going out to represent my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that at that 15 minutes, that whatever our Lord's going to have me to bring is going to touch a soul. It may bring him to Christ. And so it really made me think how important that is. And when I'd go out there, I'd be prepared. And I'd pray for God to watch over me and guide and direct me. And what a wonderful time that 15 minutes was. Because those kids would talk and communicate with me. And I'd get to hear their thoughts and their concerns. And what's going on in their life. And I was able to just be sharing a part of that with the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts. So it's so important that... Uh, Whoever goes to camps, I thank you for that. I thank you for taking the time out of your life to touch a young person's life. It well as it touch your own, and it make you grow. It make you grow closer into Jesus, and it help Him to dwell inside of you, because there's nothing more important than that. And so, if you ever get a chance to volunteer or go, it's worth every penny. You'll be so blessed. I just can't tell you how important it is. 
to be there for our young people and the youth in the church. Thank you, Jerry. I'm so uh, surprised he let an old fogey like me get up here. But our, our great-grandson, Braden, is 13 now. Last year, he went to the first camp he'd ever been able to attend the junior camp. Well, this year, as camp time approached, I asked him, I said, Braden, you want to go to camp? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He said, of course I want to go to camp. And he has had a ball, and he needs it. It's just like it says here. The seasoned saints need to teach, nurture, and assist in navigating these kids' lives. And Sister Cora Rogers, they had a what I'm going to call a junior, junior camp, a little three-day camp. We have a little great-granddaughter, Kendall. She wasn't quite old enough, but Sister Cora said, let her go. And from the minute she got permission to go, it was about every day, how long to camp, how long to camp, how long to camp. And she got to go, and I personally want to thank Sister Darlene Collins and Sister Betty Williams for letting her ride with them. And we told them, said, she never shuts up now. <laughs> like, a, she, like a motor mouth. But coming back, I think she passed out. So that wasn't too much of an issue. But it really does me good, especially to see my great-grandkids get to go to camp. Now, when I was 17 years old, I was only able to attend one. And I was 17 years old. We had our camp in Pensacola, Florida, on the water. So, so, you know, we had a ball. But these camps, they have enriched Braden and enriched Kendall. And I had something else that was on my mind, but at my age, my mind fleets, so I don't remember exactly what it was. But thank you, Corbin. Thank and you I want to thank Jeff. every one of you for taking care of these kids. You have, oh, I know what it was. It was Caitlin. That's our little granddaughter who was Down syndrome. She's, how old is Caitlin? 22? 23. She's in Louisiana right now with her mom in Baton Rouge. But I want to appreciate, I to thank you for the love that you have shown her. I really do. And uh, Tracy has felt so welcome by the people in this church and that's why she joined because we were really concerned about Tracy but as most of you were at conference here a couple of months ago she was baptized with Sister Potter and we're glad to have you with us tonight and uh, in fact I'm on hush Joe it's hard not to love Caitlin Caitlin has so much love for everybody else. Yes. I didn't get to attend uh, the camps. I enjoyed them when I was younger. And so I'm so happy to see so many uh, still attending them. I just wanted to share as a testimony because he's not here tonight. Uh, I have a nephew in Oklahoma, <clears throat> Drake. Uh, he's my youngest brother's son. And uh, he has had opportunities in the past to go to these camps and has uh, kind of shunned away from them. Didn't think it was, you know, anything he really wanted to be a part of. Uh, but something was different this past year, uh, and he attended junior high camp uh, along with my daughter and another couple of nephews. And uh, it was a life-changing experience for him. He was so ecstatic, uh, couldn't quit talking about it. Uh, when I was talking to my mother, who, who was also there in Black Gum, she had talked to him. And uh, he didn't want it to end. He said he had made friends, uh, clo the closest friends he'd ever made in a week than he had all of his life. and. Uh, he said, Grandma, you don't even have to ask me next year. I'm going. I'm going <laughs> back to camp. So I just wanted to share that uh, there are, uh, the Lord really is working in the lives of these kids. And uh, uh, I just wanted to, his testimony get heard, because uh, I think he would share it if he was here. 
Thank you. God is good. All and all the time. Was there anybody else who just couldn't sit in their seat any longer? <laughs> Parker, would you come up and share that scripture, please? Oh, second, second part. I didn't see you, sorry. I'm used to being overlooked. But um, I wanted to thank Corwin for the opportunity to uh, help with senior eye camp and and Samantha, you did an incredible job. And uh, everyone worked so well together. And I, I was given the opportunity to be a counselor in a cabin and, and uh, talk to the, the youth. And, and uh, I discovered that there were some young ladies that uh, had some serious struggles in their lives. And they were looking for some counseling and looking for guidance and they didn't have anybody in their lives that they could trust that wouldn't share it and uh, I was honored to uh, to help them and to to point out to them that uh, they were discovering gifts that they didn't even know they had and uh, if you do have an opportunity to go to a youth camp, to be a counselor, to be a cook even. And yes, it is the hardest job, but it is so rewarding. Please take that opportunity because the, the blessings don't stop with the end of camp. You do have friends for life and they will call you in the middle of the night. They will message you on Facebook and I uh, since senior eye camp I did have a find a message on <clears throat> Facebook which I don't normally check my messages one of the young ladies sent me a message she was struggling with something and uh, she had given me her phone number so I called her up and uh, we talked it I think we talked like 45 minutes but um, at the F after the end of it, she was, uh, we were both crying, but uh, she says, I know what I need to do now. And uh, she followed up three days later that, uh, that she'd talked to her parents about her decision and they supported her and she was changing friends and not hanging out with that group anymore. So you really do have an impact on their lives and if you ever have that opportunity, step up and take that step in faith. And I praise God that he showed me that um, I was on the outside looking in and it was time to enter the door. Thank you. Didn't mean to overlook you. And I don't want to overlook somebody else if there was somebody else who wanted to share. Okay, Parker. <clears throat> and one of the scribes came, and having heard the reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hearken and hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord with thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. I am continually amazed as these young people grow the steps they're willing to take to give ministry, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tonight I watched a young lady play the ukulele who a few years ago wouldn't hardly stand anywhere besides behind her mama because she was so shy. I've watched young men grow into priesthood to become young men who 
want to serve our Lord and Savior. I purposely chose scriptures for you tonight for them to read. And I hope that you would take them home and look them up. I know in section four it's talking about this early church that is about to come forth and the Book of Mormon that's about to be printed. But I think about how often this is still true at this moment when we work with the youth. Now behold, a marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. My first experience down at Blackcomb was in 1998. I've been to camps with Will Job and Chad Buttrey when they were children. Yeah, I'm that old. But I've seen them grow. Look around and then take to heart section 163. For you have a calling by God to a work. And some of you say, I don't know what to do. I'm going to tell you the first thing you can do is start praying for these lives. I will tell you over and over again that prayer is mighty. And it is something that each of us, whether we know these children or not, can do. I'm going to call forth the youth to come forward and sing. And I'm going to ask Albert to stand in the middle here so you can lead them. And you can bring your hymnals with you guys. You know what hymn. Bring it with you.
15 of us went on a caravan and saw youth well, our history sites. We started out seeing Noah's Ark's experience and the Creation Museum and had the chance to then go to Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And to me, that was not the joy of the trip. The next day, we got to go see Joseph Smith's home that he shared with Emma and their early marriage, where the Book of Mormon was translated. And we got to travel from Pennsylvania up into New York and see more of that historic sites in the Grove and then Hill Cumorah. And Hill Cumorah is a quite a climb, and I should have probably done some more workouts before I got there. <laughs> and then we got to go to Kirtland, Ohio, and worship in the house of the Lord. Like I said, there was only 15 of us. But as they sang in the house of the Lord, I would have swore there was 100 of us there. It was so amazing. And I understand the acoustics are pretty good in there, but it was... And I listened to my brother testify about the angels that surrounded the campfire, and I will tell you that there were angels in the house of the Lord singing with us, and there were angels worshiping with us that day. The opening hymn we sang there, you can't go to the house of the Lord and not sing that hymn. We also sang this closing hymn, 193, if you'll open up with me to 193, and we'll stand together and sing, Redeemer of Israel. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you at the end of this service, thankful for the opportunity for us all to gather here in your name and support your youth and listen to the truth and amazing testimonies that you've blessed them with this summer, both the youth and the staff, and I would pray that 
these testimonies would pierce the hearts of your saints, that they may see the importance of these things and that they may be motivated to be involved and be moved to have those experiences with us. I pray we'd be safe leaving this place this night and the spirit you've blessed us with would follow us to our homes. And in your Son, Jesus Christ, most holy name, amen. Thank you.